Okay, on the air. Maybe if you could just tell us a little bit about what you'd hope for the future here, for the future generations. Uh, uh, in regards to the um, alcohol, I think as long as uh, we have alcohol here in America, then the flatheads, well, the rest so the Indians will uh, keep on drinking, drinking, and wrecking their lives. <coughs> but if we did have a um, period where we had uh, like a prohibition era, era, and that could probably stop the excessive drinking in the, f in the future. However, one thing that I have noticed from observation is that uh, when the Indians were permitted to drink uh, for the first time, they passed a law which uh, they were allowed to drink uh, to their heart's content. Now, a lot of people thought that that night all the bars would be just filled up to the rafter rafters with Indians. But the strange thing happened. Very little Indians showed up for that uh, opening night. and um, But uh, they do uh, know that... Uh, since they can drink now, then they don't have to go on a slide and getting some white bootlegger to get them uh, the, their liquor. And, uh, of course, the uh, price of the liquor then was uh, awful great because the uh, bootlegger himself wanted a little commission for it. He wouldn't do it just for the fun of it. And uh, But it still is bad enough that the... Uh, that they can uh, drink uh, to their heart's content uh, and lose uh, damn near everything. That that causes a lot of them, be, a lot of them, be, to become uh, penniless, worthless bums, and they have nothing to eat at home and no clothes and no car, nothing. They just have, they're just poor, and uh, that's what alcohol does to them. So uh, the future of the alcohol is. Uh, quite bleak uh, as far as those alcoholics are concerned. There'll be uh, a lot of poor Indians all the time, as long as they have uh, the dang alcohol uh, on the reservation. And as I have said, the future of the um, missionary or the church is uh, quite bleak too, because uh, a lot of the flatheads uh, are losing interest in the uh, in the religion, therefore uh, the uh, father school admission and the uh, Ursuline school admission had to be closed and torn down because of lack of uh, uh, attendance. And uh, these days, uh, when we when we do go to mission at church, uh, I do know that uh, very few Indians go there anymore compared to what they used to. It used to be that uh, Easter and th Christmas would be the two of the biggest church days of the year, and likewise with Corpus Christi. And uh, they used them as a reunion for the Flatheads. And they went there only just for the sake of uh, seeing their friends and relatives uh, on those two days. And uh, now, especially on Easter, the women would uh, be wearing their uh, brand new silk dresses and uh, new shawls, new uh, head scarves and new silk stockings and new uh, moccasins. And oh, they looked beautiful. And the men would be wearing their what they call blue serge pants and silk shirts and uh, big hats and silk, silk scarves around their necks. And then They'd have a, a nice reunion out there in the churchyard. They would be visiting, talking, talking. And then uh, in some cases, uh, some men would uh, see a, a girl or a woman who was so nicely dressed, he'd go up to her and say, uh, will you marry me? Then she'd say, OK. Then from then on, they'd, they'd go to get back home together. and. Uh, that's how it was easy to uh, get married at those in those days. They did not have a prolonged courtship uh, like they do have uh, uh, in uh, in a European style. And uh, now, not only that, but uh, see the the 
Indian women have as much privilege uh, as uh, the men have when it comes to choice of men. Now, I have had women come up to me and they'd, they'd ask me, can I go home with you? And I'd, I'd tell them, no, you can't. I already have a wife at home. Or either that, or in my college days, I was still going to school. I'd tell her, uh, well, you could, but uh, I'd have to be going to uh, go to school in college. Uh, then you'd have to, have to stay home like a good girl at home. And that would make it kind of hard. Well, then uh, they thought they'd wait until uh, uh, I was out of school. Then, they'd, uh, then, they'd, uh, then we'd get married. Now, once, uh, or in two occasions, I picked out a girl whom I wanted for a wife, and I asked her to be my wife, and she said, both of them said, N no, I can't do it because I'm waiting for my boyfriend. He's in jail. When he gets out, then he and I will get together. Now, later on, when their husbands mistreated them, and beat them up and uh, whatever, then they'd come up to me and say, I'm ready to be your wife. And I t uh, tell him, well, you're half late. I already found a wife at home. Now, uh, uh, what, what, what do you have in mind that you want to ask? Uh, it was just really open question. If you had anything you'd like to, for people to listen to about about how you hope that the reservation will be in the future, any anything that you'd like to see done here by the tribal council or by the people themselves? Or? Oh, yeah. I have no idea what kind of a budget the tribal council makes, uh, but I do know that uh, from the hearsay that uh, some of the tribal council members have uh, sure uh, raised their own salaries. Uh, the salary that they make now is so high that uh, they could break our, our bank by their salary that they are, they are making now. And then, uh, like in the future, uh, I hope they do not have uh, too much of uh, expansion on the on the trouble things, like uh, when uh, the agency was first formed here at Dixon, there were only three men working there: the Indian agent himself, and the, and the man who was taking care of the finances, and the forest supervisor. And those three men did their own typing; they did not have secretaries. So whenever we wanted to do business with them. We'd go to see the superintendent or the uh, financier or the forest supervisor. Then we'd get our business done right then and there. But now when we go to uh, Pablo, my gosh, there is one department after another. And sometimes the secretaries will have a, a secretaries of their own, and in turn the secretaries will have the more secretaries of their own, because they, their ex excuse is that they, they are overburdened with uh, their work on their jobs. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not. However, that part is all right because it gives a lot of the uh, Flatheads and the Kootenays employment in the agency. I have no idea how many people work uh, here at the Pab Flathead I Agency in, uh, in Pablo. And, uh, but then that could uh, kind of uh, put a little dent on our income uh, per year if they have too dang many uh, employees. And uh, I have no idea just about what kind of a budget the tri Tribal Council will be making uh, uh, in regards to uh, education, uh, health, and whatnot. Now, I, I am glad that that we do have this cur dam, then uh, because of that we will be a little more fortunate than a lot of the tribes around the country whom I feel sorry for. Now like those Nevada people in Arizona and uh, who live in uh, deserts, they have absolutely nothing. Oh my gosh, it makes me wonder how in heck they make their living. Now like the poor Rocky boys, 
they live in a small reservation. I asked, how in heck do they uh, get along uh, uh, where they have n no income of anything or any kind? Then I was told, well, they practically live all on uh, welfare. Oh, my gosh. Now, if uh, we did not have this Kerr Dam, then uh, we flatheads would be one of the poorest uh, at the present. But I have been told by my former physics teacher that we flatheads are very lucky that we are one of the richest uh, tribals, uh, tribals in, a, in a country. And I'm glad to hear that. And I think uh, our uh, future will not be so bleak as, as it could have been. But I do know that the uh, the language will be on uh, downward uh, decline in the future because uh, it will not be uh, be uh, perpetuated as good good as it should be because uh, if the parents could uh, speak uh, to their kids in their own languages and then uh, they could revive their the language that way. But uh, they don't. They're just too lazy to uh, to uh, try to uh, talk to their own la to their kids in their own languages. Now at home, uh, my grandmother and uh, my mother uh, uh, talked to me in Nez Perce all the time, while my stepdad uh, spoke the planted language to my mother and uh, my older sister and my younger sister. And Therefore, I picked it up with ease, and of course, I learned the flathead from the flathead kids and other flatheads around the country. Therefore, I had no trouble uh, perpetuating those two languages. And uh, however, the uh, the langu flathead language is uh, quite dark uh, in the future, because if they are not spoken at home anymore. Uh, because the parents are too dang lazy to uh, speak. They'd rather speak uh, English uh, all the time because they think it's easier. And, uh, okay, well, I think that's that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. I sure appreciate it. Uh -huh.